hope you can see oh. my screen now. Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, okay, that's great. Uh, okay. Thanks, uh, thanks. I, I think we we are all set now, so uh, you can. Uh, I think you're free to start. Okay, Over thank to you, you. Uh, for having me here. Uh, it's a pleasure, and uh, I would actually like to present uh, some intermediate uh, results of uh, of the project called Duet Digital Urban European Twin, and. Uh, as, as you can see here, uh, while you see here the, the agenda, uh, I will shortly mention that uh, we are in the middle of the project uh, and we are about 15 partners from seven countries, which has somehow connection with what we need to do uh, in the communication challenge we have, uh, especially in these days. And we have three pilot cities, uh, as you can see from three different uh, European uh, uh, European countries from Greece, uh, from Belgium, and from Czechia. Uh, if you want uh, to get some more information about the project, uh, I will later share the link to the presentation and you can find all of these links uh, in, in the presentation directly. So, um, when I say digital twin, it's kind of uh, maybe a new buzzword using uh, for the last two, three years in, in Europe for uh, some. Uh, let's say more fancy name for smart cities sometimes. But it's actually a pretty old uh, old uh, phrase. You can find it in, in, uh, in uh, literature and originally uh, it said that uh, David Gallagher was the first one who used that term in the literature, not uh, in the scientific field. And for the scientific field, uh, you can find first uh, mentions uh, for 2002. They are related to Michael Greaves and for manufacturing, actually. And from the very beginning, it's about the communication of the physical product or physical work to the digital twin back and forth. So it means like uh, the physical world communicates via some, some sensors, of course, to the digital environment and back. So talking about this, uh, it's it's clear that uh, when we go to urban uh, urban environment, uh, you can see it as uh, as the connection of the digital representation uh, of the city via sensors uh, to the real world. So sometimes it's also presented as a dynamic real time model uh, of what is happening in the area of interest. I think it's important to understand that uh, this is not about only about uh, the real-time data, uh, which can help us to react to the present uh, the, to the processes happening in the present time. But if you if you record the uh, the sensor data, you can analyze the history, and for that, uh, okay, maybe predict the future is too cheeky uh, phrase, but. Uh, at least you can use the data you have uh, for some what if scenarios, analysis, etc. In the urban uh, area, the digital twin usually has a form of, uh, of kind of an interactive platform where uh, there is a strong presence of uh, sometimes you can hear it's 4D model, or whatever, but I, I would say it's 3D model which has some kind of time awareness uh, in, inside. The time awareness is bigger uh, or less depending on the on the particular deployment, and this is one one important structural part of the digital twin. And the other is uh, the handling of the processes. So it means capturing uh, the process, uh, ca capturing the data, processing the data, and portray uh, outputs of analysis, etc. So we'll now go. Uh, Let's say from, uh, what, uh, sorry, uh, there is one more slide. Uh, what's actually the purpose of the digital twin? Uh, as we know, we should present the information to, uh, to uh, city officials, to policy makers, to inhabitants in a clear, understandable way. So it means the interpretation is easy, actually. If we have uh, so, then we can discuss that uh, we understand the city and we are able uh, to do some policy making which is based on evidence. Uh, it's objective, at least more objective than uh, if we talk 
about uh, some decision making without data. And we have the digital twin opened. Of course, we can do the collaborative uh, uh, policy making. So it means to invite uh, partners from uh, that the city officials don't have to. Uh, they don't have to work uh, on their, themselves, but they can invite citizens and companies, etc. Usually, uh, you can find uh, some kind of uh, visualization like this, like the city collaborates with citizen enterprises, etc. If you stop now and you try to imagine to turn one of the wheel, or the, the gear, and imagine what happens with the other two, uh, you will realize that it's not actually working. There are some solution to that, of course. Uh, in engineering, uh, one of the solution is to put something in the middle. Uh, and this is the, the little year in the middle. I, this is something I would like to talk about the rest, uh, in the rest of my presentation. So uh, let's say that uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the middle year. Uh, we see it in, in the, the Duet project more like uh, T-cell, uh, which is able to connect input and output uh, of uh, different data, models, clients, etc. So we will see that we are able to connect the geographic data. They are often, and in our case, uh, for sure, they are actually in CTGML format, and this is 3D model. And once you connect something, doesn't matter if it's data or model, it registers some uh, events in this event broker, which is the central part uh, of, of the system. In our case, we use the Kafka message broker uh, for registering the events. So these are the data, uh, let's say static data or the time aware 3D model. We can connect, of course, sensor data here, and we can also connect the different uh, models uh, in our demonstration, I will talk about traffic modeling, noise modeling, and uh, air pollution modeling. Actually, you see, if you connect something, it registers here in the in the event broker. Of course, I can connect some client, one or another, and if I connect a client, it means that I can browse the data, I can uh, interact with the data, uh, I can. Uh, analyze uh, what's what's here in the in the digital twin. What's actually very important in this architecture is that all of these uh, components they don't know about each other. They communicate just with the central event broker, and uh, I will show now in more detail. So let's imagine again the empty digital twin. Uh, we connect uh, geographic data, it registers in the event broker, and there is all, already uh, an em empty client, let's say, listening if something happens, some event happened uh, here, and if so, uh, it can visualize the data. The same way I can connect uh, sensor data, as you can see. Now let's imagine that uh, something uh, happens, the user interacts uh, with the digital twin. So it means that uh, we click uh, here to some road segment and alter some uh, attributes of the, of the road network. In our case, we will uh, put there some road closure or something which, uh, which uh, has a relation to city traffic. So it means that the client sends uh, event to the event broker and there is listening uh, in this case a uh, traffic model which uh, takes the event, uh, reacts to the event and uh, put there the reaction as, as another event here. It's also listening, yeah, yeah oh, sorry, I forget. Uh, the client then reacts uh, and is able to visualize the, the output. Uh, there can be also connected noise model, which reacts uh, the same way. And in such case, uh, the client visualizes visualize the results of the, of the change in the noise in the city, for example, as well. But, uh, 
uh, there is uh, the third client air pollution model in this case. But what is important, if there is one of, uh, of these models missing, uh, it actually doesn't matter that much because uh, in, a way, in, a, in the example that air pollution model is missing, uh, the city twin will still work perfectly. It will just provide the user the information about the traffic and the noise, but not about the air pollution. So that's that's how these components are actually independent to each other, and it's easy to connect them. And it has uh, the consequences that uh, we were actually able in, in the in the project uh, to connect uh, these four uh, modules uh, from. Uh, four different countries. So we use the visualization client uh, from Germany, we use traffic modeling from plan for all noise modeling from France, and air pollution modeling from Netherlands. Uh, if you want to, to, to dig a bit deeper, I will be quick here, but let's imagine what happens in the, in the code, in the, in the message broker. Basically, uh, all of these modules are uh, subscribed in the message broker, as I mentioned. So you can see that uh, client, uh, the traffic modeling client is registered to what the topic called road network Pilsen. And there are uh, clients, uh, the noise model and the air model subscribed to the results of the, of the traffic model. So what happens uh, when uh, there is another client, uh, the interaction client, which actually alter, alter some attributes uh, of the road network. You can see this here. Uh, so it means that it publish, it publish something into the event broker. There is the traffic modeler listening and when, he, uh, when it sees a change, uh, it calculates new version of traffic model and produce the, some metadata uh, and, and uh, some result. Uh, to be honest, the result is usually rather packed uh, in some URL, but to imagine there is the JSON file uh, shown, uh, for, for example. And if there is a noise model, it does the same thing, basically. And in the case, uh, if there is an air pollution model, it also listens in the event broker in the particular topic, calculates uh, the change of air pollution depending on the change in traffic and uh, publish new data. So here is, there is just a short video showing uh, what actually happens in the client. Uh, first, we examine the 3D model. Uh, we will be soon able to see information about the live traffic uh, from sensors uh, in, the, in the city. And also, uh, the, the, these are profiles for a day, and also the, uh, the layer showing the live traffic. Uh, it's green because I shot it uh, last uh, night, so there was not that much, that much traffic. And what you can see here, this is only uh, that you always visualize, visualize the latest version of the model. It has no uh, memory of what was uh, before. It can, it can be, of course, uh, kept somewhere, but uh, the, it works uh, similar to HTTP protocol. Like you click, you get the latest version and that's it. Uh, so if you before click, close some road and made, made action, uh, you will uh, get, once the models are ready, you will get a newer version. So that, that, that's that's basically how it looks here. And I will later show uh, where you can uh, check the demo by yourself if you, if you are interested. So the Duet T-cell architecture, if I wrap it up, uh, basically allows uh, each component to subscribe to the event broker uh, and it facilitates uh, the data streams between different components uh, so uh, if there are components uh, for all of the models i mentioned uh, i can i can see them in the plan if there is something missing for a particular city for example we let's say we don't have the air 
pollution model for Athens. There not, will not be in the particle pilot the air pollution model, but uh, they will still have the other models. The architecture has some some let's say security layer. Uh, each component is shielded uh, by API, so uh, it, you can safely connect uh, connect the components, even external components. Actually, the noise modeling software is open source software. Uh, we use uh, uh, with actually with permission from the colleagues who produce that, but uh, they, they are not even a part of the consortium, and we are still able to connect their component to the, the digital twin and work with that. So uh, I could go much more into detail about the architecture of the platform, but uh, I would say that maybe better if you are interested, uh, there are quite a few deliverables uh, describing uh, the architecture in detail and the D35, how design for model calibration and simulation is uh, the best one for, for, for some first entry and I will be for sure uh, happy to answer your question if you have, if you have some. So, uh, Carol, what uh, are the next yeah, yeah, I'm basically on the very, very last uh, slide. Thank you. Uh, I will just wrap up that uh, we actually had the components working before we start uh, uh, on the project, and the project is just about the integration uh, in the architecture, integration of the components into the architecture. You can here uh, see. The traffic model are working uh, as this is our uh, model so uh, I just put here the video so you can see how each particular component is actually working uh, and as I mentioned uh, we integrate the components into the uh, into the architecture which has both technical and communication challenges uh, and sometimes uh, the communication is uh, quite tough uh, to understand each other in the consortium etc. So it means that uh, the easier the architecture, the technical architecture is, the better for uh, for developing such a distribution distributed uh, system. So if you if you want to uh, read more, there are a few few links uh, you can check, uh, ex including two publications, and that's basically all from from me. And I'm happy to answer your question if there are some.